So there's a few other functions that are uh, useful that we can pull out. Uh, first, we're going to identify a few that aren't that useful. We've already identified zero being a function of two variables that doesn't actually do anything, and one also being a function of two variables that isn't actually that useful. Uh, there are a few more in here that aren't that useful. Right here we can see uh, this is a function of two variables a and b where the output is just a. It's the same as a in all cases. Okay? Uh, and there's an opposite here, a naught. Same thing here, 0, 1, 0, 1. This is b. Uh, oh, not that one. Uh, the one right beside it is b. And it's, again, not that useful. And here is b prime. And so these two functions, a, a prime, four of them, a, a prime, b prime, and uh, a, b, b prime, and a prime, they throw away information about one of the uh, variables. Right? So this is a function of two variables where the result is just the value of one of the variables. It's a valid result, right? function of a and b equals a. That's a perfectly valid function. Not that interesting because we're throwing away information. Um, and that's, that's a thing that we do sometimes. Anyway, so those are four more functions. So now we've listed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of the 16 functions. There are a few more that are interesting uh, that we use often, one of which is uh, based on the idea of OR, uh, but looking more about how OR is used in the English language. So this is AND, and this is OR. Uh, oops. Now if I say uh, you could have... Um, strawberry ice cream or vanilla ice cream, usually people interpret that as one or the other but not both. In logic, or means one or the other or both. Uh, or is true, the output is one, if one or the other or both of the inputs is one. But we do have a function that is true if one or the other but not both is true. Uh, that lives right here, one or the other, A or B, but not both of them. This is a special function that we call exclusive or, like this, or x or. That's one or the other, but not both. And that's there. And similarly, we have its opposite. One or the other, but not both. We call the opposite of that exclusive nor. And this is true if they're, this, if they're both 0 or if they're both 1. And this is right here. One or the other, but not both. One or the other, but not both. Both true or both false. Actually, x nor, another way of saying that is equivalence. So if, if both of the inputs are 0 or both of the inputs are 1, x nor is true. So there's two more functions. So we've got and, or, nand, nor, exclusive or, exclusive nor. We've got inversion. Uh, there's a few other ones. These ones here are a bit more special. This one is true only if A is true and B is false. This one is true only if uh, A is false and B is true. This one is true only, this one is true when, this one is false only when A is false and B is true. So we say A is true a is false, B is true, and the whole thing is inverted. And the same thing here. This one is false only if A is true and B is false. So those are our 16 functions. These have special uses and special names later on. There's uh, Often in logic we use these as our implication, um, where this means that A applies B, something like that. Uh, we don't really use implication in binary logic that much. Basically all we use are and or not, and then we can extend those with nand and nor, and then we have these special cases of exclusive or and exclusive nor, all of which we can use later on. So these are the 16 possible functions of two variables. Now we can look at the, uh, all the possible functions of three variables. How many would there be? Well, if we had three variables, there's eight combinations. So there would be two to the eight possible functions, which is 256 possible functions. A system of three variables has far more functions uh, than a system of two, uh, an exponentially more, a double exponentially more functions, as you might expect. So if we look at then at these functions and we look at just the ones that we're interested in, now is the time that we want to start to build machines 
uh, that can accomplish these. Because this is logic, it's useful, it's a little bit abstract, uh, but if we had a machine that could take some information about the world and make decisions based on this logic, uh, and then you know do things to the world as a result of those decisions, uh, then we're starting to get into building machines that can actually accomplish computing. And well, don't forget, the reason we're doing this is because electronics works best on zeros and ones, on the presence or absence of, um, of voltage. And so we're trying to translate mathematical problems, real world um, interesting problems, into problems that can be solved just with having the presence or absence of voltage.